Yes guys, welcome back to another video. Welcome to the George Benson Football Channel Chelsea News for the 19th of July 2023. Sadly, we'll begin with a negative story regarding Wesley Fofana. We're going to talk also about Conor Gallagher and the potential of an offer being too good for Chelsea to refuse this summer, but do we have to refuse it straight up due to the lack of business coming in? And we're also going to discuss the latest, whatever that may be, with Caicedo. But because nothing is really going anywhere, we'll save this to the end of the video because the latest bid from Chelsea has been rejected. Shock, flipping, horror. But we're going to start with the horror that is the injury to Wesley Fofana. Chelsea defender Wesley Fofana broke his ACL. Fofana has undergone anterior cruciate ligament reconstruction surgery. Wesley will now begin his recovery and work with the club's medical department at Cobham during his rehabilitation phase, the club reports. This is, first of all, we've got to think about how we approach this. There are some fans, I say fans, they're not really fans if you treat a player like this because he's injured. Some people are so upset that Wesley Fofana cost us so much money and is now going to be out for such a long window of time that he's a waste man because uh, he's always injured. Incredible. I don't know how people can even fathom, comprehend that this is the way to approach things, but social media is social media. Nothing surprises me anymore. The sad reality is that this is life-changing times physically and mentally for Wesley Fofana. Physically, because reconstruction surgery... As much as Chelsea will have the best people in this field working to ensure that Fafana has the best chances of a full recovery, the reality is, with this kind of surgery, it doesn't mean that the player's going to come back stronger, kind of come back better. And then in the process of being a 22-year-old footballer, having to spend yet another year on the sidelines, when you've got all this potential, the world's watching you, everyone knows how good... Wesley Fofana can be, we have just got to hope that the majority of us, unlike those few idiots on social media who want to absolutely rinse the guy for the fact he's got an ACL break, I find it crazy. We all need to support Wesley Fofana as much as we can in, in any way. And He's been removing social media platforms because for him, he must be looking forward to working under a great manager, Pochettino, and then all of a sudden, medical specialists come in at Chelsea, the answer is you need surgery, he takes the surgery, and then to not play football for a year. I I don't really think I can empathise with that because sometimes I get a sore throat and can't record a YouTube video for four days. I don't really know how it feels to be taken out of your dream job for a year, but I wish him all the best, and I think we should all rally behind Wesley Fofana so that mentally it doesn't overwhelm him the fact that physically he can't do what he loves for a year. And yes, of course, we can't just ignore the financial side of this too because Chelsea did spend a lot of money on Wesley Fofana and Fofana was going to be one of those centre-backs this season who's banging on the door to be starting, whether that is right centre-back alongside Badia Shield Colwell, is it Fofana and Silva, it doesn't really matter who it is. Wesley Fofana, if he's fit, is good enough to play for Chelsea. Facts. So now, the question is, do Chelsea need to go and spend a similar amount of money that Wesley Fofana costs to replace him. Now, last season, when we talk about the good of Chelsea, defensively, we weren't as bad as we were going forward. The majority of Chelsea's problems were in attack. Defensively, we did look good. And you can argue that when a player of Fofana's ability, and the price tag even as well, because it is important, you, you can argue that if that player is out for a year, Chelsea have to go and replace him with a player just as good. I can understand that. And I do think, deep down, if we can tick off the boxes in other areas and we've got funds available, relying on Chalaba, Silva, Badia Shiel, Colwell as the senior centre-backs at the club. Trev is very consistent. I think he's underrated. But I don't know if any manager's ever really fully backed him the way that maybe they should, but they know better than me. Thiago Silva is 38, 39 years old. This is mental. Badia Schill is already currently injured. And Levi Colwell, we've been talking about whether he was going to stay or go a minute ago. So all across that back line there, there is a possibility with Badia Schill's injuries, 
with Trevor Chalobah maybe wanting to leave to be guaranteed first team football, Silver's age, Colwell might want to leave too. But there is a world here where Chelsea end up with no centre backs. And I know it's not going to happen that way because Trev won't leave Chelsea just out of nowhere with nothing available. And if he's got the potential to stay and play at Chelsea, Trev, I think, stays, would want to play. And he wants to stay under Pochettino. Colwell, now that the, the pathway for him into this first team is even clearer, I think he stays also. And with Thiago Silva, he's been brilliant the whole time he's been here. And I don't think there's any signs yet that he's just going to fall down and break a leg, despite his incredible age. So there is an argument that Chelsea need to replace a player that is out for so long with no guarantees that he's back to that level anytime within the next 18 months even. But there is also an argument that we've got some very good centre-backs here, but is it enough? I want to know your thoughts in the comments down below. Jurian Timber, who just signed for Arsenal, would have been a great player at Chelsea, in my opinion. Could be used out wide also. And when you look at the market, a top-quality centre-back... Fofana was that guy a year ago, but unfortunately, the gamble's not paying off right now for Chelsea Football Club, and we have a very injury-prone player for his whole career, whatever that is at 22, he's now going to be out for a very long time. So we've got some thinking to do. Fabrizio Romano has said Chelsea might be in the market for another centre-back, depending on what happens with other stuff, other deals at the end of the window if we need him. But we move to discuss Connor Gallagher here. Sky Sports have said West Ham interested. CFC value him well in excess of £40 million. Any departure would likely have to be driven by Gallagher himself. Pochettino is planning for him to be part of the squad next season. CFC would be open to extending his contract. Connor Gallagher, I think, would love to be at Chelsea. Connor wants to play football the same as any young footballer. And at Chelsea, when you look at the midfielder list that we've taken on this preseason tour, struggles to sign Moises Caicedo. We're in the race for Lavia, but we've always been in the race. The season's coming. Conor Gallagher is looking fit, by the way. He's looking like he's been working out a lot during this summer. And I think, in Conor's defence, I think it's very unfair the way that people saw him as a brilliant footballer at Crystal Palace. And then because of Chelsea's issues last season. I think Connor, when we're ranking like scapegoats of reasons why Chelsea failed, I think Connor was ranked so highly in the wrong way. Because I think when you're a young player who's proven himself on a loan at Crystal Palace, played very well, comes back to his boyhood club Chelsea, really wants to be there, goes through three different managers, playing in multiple different positions that are not his own, never locking down any kind of system around him, let alone for him individually, Connor was always trying very hard, and I think Pochettino is the right manager to identify the role that Connor best fits and suits in his own personal game within this Chelsea team. And I think Connor Gallagher will surprise a lot of people this season if he stays at Chelsea. I think a lot of people have written him off, and now I see him as one of the midfielders in the squad currently with the most experience, madly, by the way, it's crazy to even suggest that, but it's true. And I do think arriving late into the box is what we should be trying to get Connor to do. If there are four or five players already ahead of Connor and he can still get forward, that's when we're going to see the best out of him. And I think Pochettino will agree with what I just said and will recognise this and develop Connor into a quality midfielder for Chelsea. 40 million. Do I think Connor is good enough to start every game for Chelsea? Not yet. And that is the biggest debate here because young players want to play football and 40 million quid for a player that would just once again be pure profit on the books of Chelsea Football Club, FFP, all of this stuff. 40 million for Connor, if he's not going to start every game, is that too good to decline? And I would be inclined to suggest maybe it is. We declined it when Everton were looking to buy him in January and then performances, the whole team, Connor included, dipped between January and the end of the season. So many people are saying that we look silly for keeping hold of Connor. And there was a £40 million bid from a relegation fodder side coming in. But I do think, don't sleep on him. I do think we are going to see a different Gallagher under Pochettino. And a lot of that will be the product of the environment that is created around him. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. The latest on Caicedo. 
Caicedo camp pushing for a speedy resolution to negotiations following Chelsea's latest rejected bid. Understands there will be face-to-face -face talks in America with Caicedo's agent prepared to also attend if needed. If Chelsea and Brighton are going to meet up in America when we're all on our little jollies in our pre-seasons, Chelsea and Brighton in a meeting. Caicedo is now desperate to leave Brighton. If his agent arrives at that meeting, we will see the steel and the resilience of Brighton or we won't. Brighton are either going to be like, well, I don't know what you're pissed off about, mate. We labelled our price and you over there, Mr. Bowley, you've not hit it yet. So take your little whining client away, Mr. Agent. And he's our player until Chelsea cough up the cash. That could happen. Or it could also put pressure on alternatively. And Brighton are just like, right, he really doesn't want to stay. We've got a player on our hands here who could add some toxic elements to the dressing room. And then he leaves. I think Chelsea still get Caicedo. I just worry, like I said in last night's video, we can't let this keep dragging on. Mainly because I want Pochettino to have everyone available to him that he needs in time to start this season. And Caicedo is such a key component for Chelsea moving forward. Like we say, we can't even think about selling Gallagher right now when we've got no reinforcements coming in. So we've got to start getting reinforcements so that Poch isn't just working with what he has to work with, but there is some element of him building the team he wants, as opposed to just being forced to use 18-year-olds, 19-year-olds, and being like, you want a Champions League, but did, did the rest come to enable me to do that? No, we got to figure this one out, guys. But that is the latest Chelsea news. Fafana, not looking good. I feel for the bloke, but what do we do about it? Let me know your thoughts on that in the comments below. Gallagher, yeah, Premier League clubs are going to want him, but I say keep him for this season. And Caicedo, it's, well, we're all going to party if this one does go through, when it goes through, aren't we? I bloody well hope so. Subscribe to GBFC if you are new around here and haven't already done so. Hit the like button if you do enjoy these Chelsea news videos. And like I said at the start of this video, I had a final story that I almost forgot about. And if you've stayed until the end of this video... Well done to you. I love you. You're the favourite out of all of the people that watch these videos. Deli Alley. Is there any way for a Deli Alley Pochettino reunion if... The only reason I'm saying this is because if Deli Alley gets back to what he was at Spurs, or as he said himself in the interview with Gary Neville, very powerful interview, he said he wants to be better than he was before. Would you say... If Deli Ali has a good season for Everton, that you would like him to be reunited with Pochettino at Chelsea next season. He's only 27 years old. He'll be 28 in a year's time. Is this something that you would like? I'm not even going to say do it now because he has a great relationship with Poch and he wants to be great again. No, I'm saying in a year, if he has a good season at Everton, would you take the risk? Would you take the risk? Just throw it out there because I want to hear your thoughts on the potential of it. And don't call me crazy, because it isn't. Because if Deli Alley plays like he did 15, 16, 17 at Spurs, he's a phenomenal footballer. So that don't make me crazy, okay? But never sign him now because he's proved nothing on the football pitch. But if he has a good season, Poch Alley reunion. Would you welcome it at Chelsea? Or is he too Tottenham for that? Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Come on, you blues.